A few weeks ago, Tyler and I did a podcast about firewalls and how they are important for people if they want to stay safe while using their computers. And one of the things I asked on that podcast was if anybody was interested in me doing a brief tutorial on actually how to use a firewall on Linux. And several people indicated that they were, in fact, interested in such a video. So you ask and you receive. That's how these things work. So today I'm going to be talking about one of the most simple things you can do on Linux to keep yourself safe. Now, the first thing we should talk about is what actually is a firewall. Because at its heart, a firewall is actually fairly simple, at least in idea. Like, the concept of a firewall is very simple to understand. What it does is it acts as a breaker point between you and the outside world so that any traffic that you are targeted with, so things from the outside trying to come in, things like trying to get through at, through a SSH port or something like that, uh, can be stopped if it's not authorized. That's why they call it a firewall. It's meant to be between you and the outside world. Technologically speaking, firewalls are a little bit more advanced than that and a little bit beyond me. I'm, I'm sure that the development of such a thing is much more complicated than the actual concept of it. So what we're going to be talking about today is a specific firewall called UFW or the uncomplicated firewall. And what UFW is, is what it, it says on the tin is it's a firewall that is very, very uncomplicated. There's not anyone out there that couldn't find themselves able to implement this on their system. No matter what system they're using, as long as they're using Linux, this will work. Now, there are two ways of setting this up. You can use something called GUFW, which is a GUI front end for UFW, or you can use the terminal version of it, which is what we're going to do today. Now, the reason why I'm not showing the GUFW program is simply because I've never used it. I've seen it used, and it looks very simple. It's just, I don't do stuff in the GUI. So, if that's something you're interested in, I highly recommend checking out DistroTube's video on this. He did a very brief exploration of GUFW at the end of his video, so if you want to see that, you can do that. I will leave a link to that in the video description. So here is how you use UFW. Let's go ahead and jump in. Okay, so here we are on a very standard version of Arch Linux. This was installed with the Arch Linux GUI installer, so there are some things installed by default, but for the most part, this is just vanilla Arch. If you are on something like Ubuntu, or if you're on Fedora, or if you're on OpenSUSE, a lot of times those distros come with their own firewalls installed. Sometimes it's UFW, sometimes it's something different. So you may encounter some conflicts if you're on a different distribution. Chances are the distribution that you're using either has UFW installed or it's not installed at all and you can install it from the repo. So in the case of Arch Linux, you can open up a terminal and we'll install UFW. So I don't know why the console always opens up like that in this particular version of Arch. It doesn't really matter. The point is, is that it's easy to install. So sudo pacman dash s UFW. Now, if you are on, like I said, Ubuntu, UFW should already be installed. If it's not, you can install it like this apt install UFW. Now, once you have it installed, so I'm going to go ahead and install this here, just like this, and enter our password. Once it's installed, we need to enable the service. So if you are on a system that's running systemd, this is very easy. If you're using a different init system, it's going to be different. You'll have to look up that syntax for enabling services in that particular init system. So if you're using OpenRC or Runit or something like that, you'd have to look up this the syntax for enabling services and how to use UFW. Chances are there is a guide out there somewhere on how to do this. But for systemd, what you want to do is run this command here. So sudo system ctl, which is the command we use to enable all and deal with all systemd services. And then we want to do enable, and then we're going to do dash dash now flag, which basically what this does is it, it, it creates a sim link where it needs to create a sim link so that every time you start up the computer, this service will start. But it will also, with the dash dash now flag, it will start the service now. You, that way you don't have to run a separate command saying start the service. So what we're going to do is type in UFW, if you can type those letters, and then dot service. Hit enter. Uh, if you haven't already entered your password, it will ask you for your password, but if not, this is what the output should look like. And we can see that it's running if we do sudo system 
CTL status UFW dot service. And we should see here that it says active and it is. So we can hit Q to quit that. And we now have UFW enabled, but it's still not quite running yet. So the next thing we need to do is make sure that UFW is actually running. So we want to do sudo UFW enable. So that just tells you UFW to actually be on. It's, this is turning the on switch. The service is running, but if the service is running, but UFW is not enabled, it does nothing. It's just running in the background, taking up resources, but not actually doing its job. It's taking a break or something. I don't know. The, the point is, once you've done this enable thing, it will tell you firewall is active and enabled on your system startup. So you can, again, check and make sure UFW is actually running correctly this time by doing sudo UFW status. And it will tell you that the status is active. So let's go ahead and clear this. Okay, so theoretically right now, you're done. Like there's absolutely nothing else you have to do. You have a firewall that is now protecting you from traffic from outside of your network. And you could walk, get up and walk away here if that's what you wanted to do. But there are a few more things that you probably should know. The next thing you want to do is check and see what options you have for allowing traffic in so you want to have full control over your firewall so that in case you come across some kind of application whether it's you know ssh or torrenting or something like that you want to have control so that you can allow those things to have access to the internet properly have access to the internet i should say in order to see what apps have the ability to be permitted that access you run this command here sudo ufw app list and what that will do is it will show you every application that you can allow to have access through the firewall so things like ssh things like imap ports things like torrenting clients so on and so forth because by default ufw blocks everything that comes in okay so Anything like SSH and stuff will be blocked by default. You have to, you know, same thing with Samba. Even if you're just using a Samba local share, your Samba has to have permission to communicate between the two computers. And if there's a firewall in between them, it's going to block it. So you'll have to make sure that you have allowed Samba in order for that to work. So you can see through the list of stuff here that there's just stuff that you have the option of allowing through your firewall. In order to do that, it's really easy. So let's say we wanted to allow SSH. So we do sudo UFW allow, and then the name of the thing that we want to allow. In this case, we want to do capital SSH. So SSH, hit enter, and it will tell you that it's added a, a rule. It will also tell you that it's added a rule for V6, which is basically telling you that it's allowed uh, created a rule for IPv6, which is the internet protocol stuff. It's complicated and it's not necessarily all that important, but it's creating it for both versions of IP, uh, the, the internet protocol. So uh, once you've done that, we can actually test and see whether or not that rule was actually created. We could do U uh, sudo UFW status numbered, and this will tell us that, that we in fact do have complete SSH access. Now, Technically, this is the wrong way of doing SSH because what this will do is it will allow SSH, which is what you wanted to do, but it will allow bad actors to have complete access to that SSH port without any limitation whatsoever. So they could continually try to, to get into your computer uh, without any limit to the number of times they can attempt to do so. So what we want to do actually is delete that rule. So how would we go about doing that? So the reason why we use this command here with the numbered option is because we want to delete both of these. So what we want to do sudo ufw delete and then one and then it'll ask us to confirm hit yes and then if we run this numbered again we'll see that we only have the second rule and what we want to do then is just delete two one here as well and then hit yes and then we can actually run this thing here and we'll see that we have no rules whatsoever so what do you want to do with ssh if you want to limit the amount of attempts a bad actor could potentially use that service to try to get into your computer well there's a, a way to do that you can do sudo ufw allow excuse me that's not allow it's supposed to be limit so ufw limit ssh let me do that and now if we do this command here 
the pseudo UFW status numbered, hit enter again, we'll see now that the action here, instead of just saying allow in, it says limit in. That way that there is a certain standard for the amount of time someone can try to get into your computer in a certain amount of time. That way if they're trying to get past it, like a lot of those things are automated. So that if you, if you know, they're trying to guess your password or something and, uh, if they try to do it so many times in like 30 seconds, though that IP address will get blocked so that they can't try it again. They'd have to try again with a different USB IP address and it makes you safer in that way. So let's go ahead and allow one more application. So if we do sudo UFW app list again, we can see that there is a BitTorrent client here called transmission. So let's just go ahead and allow that. So sudo UFW allow transmission. You want to make sure you capitalize it appropriately. If it will allow you to create rules for things that are not on this list, those rules just don't do anything. So you want to make sure you, tr you actually spell and capitalize things properly. So transmission, just like that. Hit enter. And now if we do sudo UFW status numbered, we'll see that we have the SSH and transmission. So really, that's all that needs to be done for UFW in order for you to use it competently. You need to know how to install it. You need to know how to enable it. You need to know how to create rules and find the apps that you can create rules for. And you need to know how to delete things. That's the five things that you need to know in order to use UFW. There is a ton more stuff that you can do with UFW. I highly recommend checking out the man page because there's a ton of documentation there that you can use to do more technological and advanced stuff that doesn't really need to be done, but can be done if that's something that you want to do. So that is UFW. If you have questions, you can leave those questions in the comment section below. I will try to answer them. I'm not a, an expert at UFW. I've never gone past exactly what I've shown you. That's what I do every time I'm on my systems. And that's pretty much all you ever need to do. So if your question goes beyond that, I may or may not, may not have an uh, answer. But you can still leave those in the comment section below if you have thoughts, comment section below. You, you can follow me on Twitter at LinuxCast. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash LinuxCast. Before I go, I'd like to take a moment to thank my current patrons. Robert, Sid, Devon, Patrick, Fred Kramer, Maglin, Jackson, Iphone Tools, Steve Ace, Subregular Linux, Garrick, Samuel, Mitchell, Art Center, Carbon Data, Jeremy, Sean, Odin, Martin, Eve, Andy, Ross, Merrick, Camp, Joshua Lee, J-Dog, Peter A, Crucible, Dark Band, 6, Primes, and PM. Thanks, everybody, for watching. I'll see you next time.